You've clicked on this video because you know the feeling. You're excited to start editing, you drop that footage on the timeline and it's just average. But fear not, because in this video, I'm going to give you four ideas to make average boring footage look more cinematic in the edit. Okay, cinematic is cliche, but you know what I mean. Let's make the bland footage look cool. Starting with problem number one, busy or distracting footage. When the background is too busy or it's unclear to the viewer what the subject of the shot is, you might want to focus the viewer's attention on the subject. Looking at this shot here, it might initially be unclear what I want you to focus on, but I can add a Gaussian blur effect to the clip to guide your focus to where I want it to be. I would personally drop the effect onto the clip in the viewer to let Final Cut Pro try to identify the subject. In this case, you can see that Final Cut Pro identifies the building I want to focus on as an object. I'll drop the effect on the clip, and because there is movement, I'm going to track the blur to that movement. I'll make sure the tracker is selected, and for now I'm going to set my blur amount to zero. I'll adjust the shape over the building, and then I'll hit analyze to track the movement. When it's done, I'll boost the blur amount so I can see what is being affected. I'll also click on the mask icon up here and invert the mask, keeping my subject in focus and blurring everything else. I'll switch over to the shape properties and then click on this down arrow where I can change the behavior from pin to tracker to offset from tracker. This is important because if I adjust the shape of the mask, it does not affect my tracker. Now I can adjust the shape of this mask and I'll expand the size of the mask and feather it out quite a bit. Lastly, I'll set the blur amount to 5 so the effect is more subtle. When you look at the shot now, the viewer will immediately be able to identify the subject of the shot. Another problem you might face is static footage. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with a locked off tripod shot, in fact, we see them all the time. But if you're trying to make a shot more exciting in post, here are three quick ways to add some movement to otherwise boring static shots. Method number one is to add a slow zoom for the entire duration of the shot. With my playhead at the beginning of the clip, I can head over to the inspector window and set a keyframe on the scale and position parameters. Then I can hit the down arrow to go to the beginning of my next shot, and then the left arrow key to go back one frame to the last frame of the shot. And then I'll change the scale, maybe to 125%, and I'll adjust the position so that we're zooming into all the activity here along the river. Now, the scale keyframes are linear and we can't change them, and the position keyframes are ease in and ease out. So we need to change those to linear by using the shortcut Control V to bring up the video animation properties. I'll select the down arrow next to the transform properties and select position, and then right click on each keyframe to change them from smooth to linear. Now we have a nice slow zoom in. Method number two is to use the free truly handheld plugin from the Final Cut Pro to add handheld motion to the clip. In this case, I'll use the 24 mm version and set the smoothing to 25. Too much handheld motion makes a shot look too shaky, but just enough makes it feel more organic than a tripod shot. You can get it for free or name your price if you want to support your fellow Final Cut Pro. Method number three is to use another free plugin called MCAM Rig from Motion VFX. I use this one all the time. You simply drag the title effect on top of your clip, you can adjust the angle of view, and you can animate this in and out. I'll play it back and it looks like this. We have a nice little blur going on as well, but if you want to remove that, you can set the depth of field blur amount to zero, and now it looks like this. As a bonus tip, you can combine the handheld tip with the MCAM rig plugin, and I'll do that by dropping this title effect on top of the previous clip. And now you have some really dynamic motion on an otherwise static shot. Problem number three is a shot that lacks visual interest. Like this one. I mean, it's fine, but there's some negative space here, and maybe we want to use this shot in an upbeat promo, and we want it to be a bit more interesting. You can grab a light leak clip from a stock footage site like Storyblocks or Envato Elements and drop that on top. You can play around with different blend modes to get the look you want. I normally go with screen, lighten or add. You can also adjust the opacity to reduce the intensity of the light leaks. And voila, you have some visual interest in an otherwise bland shot. You can do this with almost any kind of overlay effect like film scratches as well. 
You can also solve this problem by adding effects to the clip. Final Cut Pro has a bunch of built-in ones you can try under the stylized category of effects, but they are nowhere near as good as some of the third-party effects you can find from a plugin company like Motion VFX, for example. Their M-Style Cinematic Plugin Pack is a great example. Included in the plugin pack is a bunch of great overlay effects, and I'll show you a couple of my favorites. The anamorphic effect is really cool. It stretches out the clip a bit to give the shot an anamorphic feel. You can also use the on-screen controls to adjust the center of the effect, and you have a bunch of customizable parameters to control the effect. All of these effects have customizable parameters, and they have the option to animate the effect in and out if you want. Another one I like is Dream Vision to get that dream effect, or maybe you're cutting back to a memory. You can add flares on top of your footage. There are a few different presets to choose from. I like to keyframe the flare position to a light source to make it feel more organic, and the result looks like this. You have a nice grain effect, halation, a cool letterbox effect that you can also animate in and out of. Another fun one is the light diffuse effect. I like to choose a color from my scene so it feels like natural light has been added to the shot. You can also add a light leaks overlay super quickly and easily. You can also add the LUT presets effect and choose from one of the included LUTs that comes with M-Style Cinematic. There are also 10 professional looking title animations that are perfect for just about any type of video. And lastly, there are also some really nice transitions to choose from. I like the dissolve transition, which looks like this. And the shade transition, which looks like this. You can scrub through the transitions to see what they look like before applying them. If you want a quick and easy way to improve average or bland shots, the tools in M-Style Cinematic are great for elevating the production quality on your videos. Use the link below and the code BRAD10 to get 10% off. Another problem you might face is that a shot is just dull. In this case, spending a bit more time on your color grade can make a huge difference in making your shot look more interesting. With a shot like this, I would start by adding a color curves adjustment to adjust the contrast. I'll adjust the white point, making sure it doesn't clip on my video scopes. And I'll also create a subtle S curve here to create more contrast between the light and dark areas. Next, I'll add a color wheels correction. The buildings have a green blue tint to them. So in the mid-tones, I'll push this puck away from green and blue to add more warm tones into the shot. I'll also add some warmth to the highlights. I'll add some blue into the shadows to make sure we have a nice color contrast between the warm tones in the highlights and the cool tones in the shadows. Lastly, I'll add a hue saturation curves adjustment to the clip. And on the hue versus saturation curve, I'll select the eyedropper tool and select the red buildings. I want to boost the saturation here as well as the orange in these buildings. This building on the left is now very saturated in comparison, so I'll click on it with the eyedropper tool and just bring that down a little bit. If you look at the before and after of the shot, you can see how the grade has brought more attention to the buildings in the foreground and made the shot more interesting. If you found these tips helpful, then you definitely need to watch this video next for five creative ways to use adjustment layers.